All right, so we are calculating the average, and in order to calculate the average of um, of an array, or you know, yeah, in order to calculate the average, we basically need to sum up all the elements in the array and divide by the number of items in the array. So the example I gave, I keep on um, <laughs> removing it. Let's see if I still have it copied. Let's see. Nope. All right. Okay, it's fine. With the example I gave, we need to basically add them all up um, and then divide by the total number of elements in the array. So in that case, we had four elements. We add them all up and we divide by four. We can go ahead and use this loop, okay, in this array, uh, in this method over here. But when we do that, we are basically repeating our repeating code. And I don't, uh, um, um, in this particular case, we don't have to do that. Because we have a method already called getTotal that can get the total of something for us, okay, on a, of an array for us. So we can use it. Because it's public, it's available to us, we can use it. So let's go ahead and define a variable. It's called um, total. So it's going to be a double because our array will contain double values. So double total is going to be equal to, I'm not going to set it to zero. I'm going to set it to basically the total by calling the get total method because we, again it's public we have access to it so I'm going to call get total and get total we define it to do to accept a one dimensional uh, array over here in the get average method we passed in a one dimensional array called numbers so we want to get the total of the numbers array that was passed into get average we'll have sorry I need the semicolon here so we'll have the total of numbers already in total. We don't have to basically repeat this loop again, because that's what get to get total is doing for us. By doing this, we are being more efficient. We are being more elegant. We have our total now. We need to know the number of items in the array that was passed to get average. And I mentioned over here that every array object, every array is an object, and every array object has a public field called length that contains the number of items in that array. So in order to access it, you call the name of the array and access the length field using the dot operator. So I'm going to create another variable. Um, it's going to be an int because we are dealing with the number of items in an array. Even though, let's say, even though the array is going to have doubles, we are counting how many arrays in, are in there. So there are four doubles or five doubles. That's why it's an int. So int, I'm going to call it. Um, actually, let's not call it total. I, I like to name my variables, you know, very long. I like to give them, you know, long names and kind of meaningful names. All right, so let's call this um, num numbers total, just so we know exactly what it is. So numbers total is going to be equal to get total of numbers. And then let's create another variable call and call it um, number of items in array. All right, number of items in array. Or let's say a number of items in numbers. All right, numbers array, why not? <laughs> it's really long, but I, I do this just so it's clear, okay? You can name it whatever you want as, as long as it makes sense to you. But I like to name my log. All right, so oops, what am I doing? All right, so this is a variable, all right? So num number of items in numbers array is going to be equal to, we can access the length field of this numbers object by using a dot operator and accessing it. So it's going to be called to numbers.length. So by doing this, we basically have the two things that, I will, that, that will allow us to calculate our average. Well, for our average, we need the total, and then we need the total number of items in that, in that array. And so I can basically declare a variable and, and call it average. It's going to be a double because our average is going to be a double, right? Once we, we divide, uh, uh, we take a double and divide by an integer, we're going to get double, right? So double average is going to be equal to our total, our numbers total, okay, divided by our number of items in numbers array. I know it's a long name, but again, I want it to be clear. So by doing this, we have our average here. And then we can return our average because we defined this method to uh, return a double, um, okay? And that, that, that happens to be our average. So return average. Okay, so by doing this, we basically did that. You know, we could have uh, used a, use a uh, loop, but we didn't have to. Get total did that for us. It calculated calculated the total for us. All right, so let's go ahead and do the last two: get highs and get lowest. All right, so I'm going to create another 
public static method. Let's see. So this method should accept a one-dimensional array as its argument and return the highest value in the array. Okay, so it's going to return the highest value. Um, since it's going to, since our array that we're going to pass to these methods is going to be a double array, then it's going to return one of them, all right? And if it contains doubles, then it's going to return a double. So the return type is going to be a double. Now let's call this get highest. All right, so get highest. <coughs> All right, so get highest is going to accept a one dimensional array. So just like this, it's going to accept a double one dimensional array because we decided that uh, we are going to pass in a one dimensional array to these uh, methods. The question also said it use any primitive data type of your choice. We're going to use doubles. All right, so in order to get the uh, highest number, assume, let me, let me put an example here. Assume again we have an array like this, 7.6, and then 6.7. So assume we have an array like this, a double array like this. Uh, in order to get our highest, what we're going to do is, we're, for, by the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assume that the very first element of our array, okay, is our highest, our highest element. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to declare um, double um, variable and I'm going to call it highest number. And I'm going to set it to the first element of the array that's passed to us. So I'm going to set it to numbers. The first element, in order, in order, in the way to access the first element is by its index, right? And the index of the first element is always zero. <coughs> So I'm storing the first element here, and I'm assuming that, okay, we're assuming that that's the highest number. What we are going to do is we're going to go through the loop. And this time I'm going to use, actually, the, 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 loop, the loop we created up here, okay? Because it's a different scenario, we need to go through the, we need to go through it. All right, so the same thing, we are using the current numbers index, setting it to zero, and we're going to use that index to access an element in this array and then we're going to increase it, it becomes one, use that to access an element in array. We, each time of the way we are checking to see if it's a valid index by making sure that the index is less than the length of the array. Because as soon as we have an index that's equal to or greater than the length of the array, then that's not a valid index. We can't use that index to access an element in array. So we know, always need to make sure that the indices we are using to access the element in array is always less than the length of the array. That's the case that we can use to access the, you know, ele an element in the array. All right, so we're assuming the highest number is the first element in the array. Each time we are going through the, each time we are, we are taking each element and we are comparing, we are going to say, if at any time, we're going to write an if statement here. So if at any time, while we are going through th this loop, any element is greater than what's stored in highest number, then that element becomes that highest number. Right, otherwise, highest number stays the same. So the first time, we assume that highest number is 7.6. 7 point, 7 point, 7 right, so when the loop runs, it's going to actually start from 7.6. Okay, It's going to say, we, again, highest number contains 7.6. That's different. We start from the loop. We say, okay, is 7.6 greater than 7.6? No. So the loop will do, the if statement will do nothing. And it goes to the next element. Is 4.4 greater than 7.6? No. Is 5.5 greater than, says so sorry, 5.0 greater than 7.6, no. It's 13.453 greater than 7.3. Sorry, it's greater than 7.6. In this case, yes. So what we do is this now becomes the highest number. So we'll replace what's stored in the highest number with this. And then we'll keep going. We'll check. Is 6.7 greater than 13.453? No. And so the highest number will stay at 13.453. Okay? So we're assuming... So uh, highest number is 7.6. So if at any time, while we are going through the loop, the the particular element in the array, if at any any number, okay, in the uh, while we're going through the loop, any if any number is greater than what's already stored in highest number, let's go ahead and replace, okay, what's already stored in highest numbers. Sorry, I I named this highest numbers. 
I meant to say highest number. All right, so if at any time, what's what's stored in, sorry, if at any, if at any time while we're going through the loop, any element is greater than what's stored in highest number, we are replacing what's stored in highest number with that element. Okay, that, that I and mean, the way we access that element is by calling the array and by using the, the particular index. Okay, because the index will start from zero and go through all the way to the last index. So, so if 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 we find out that there's any number that's greater than what's already stored in highest number, we replace what's stored in highest number with that number. And that number becomes the highest number. And when we are done with the loop, we return highest number. So I, I hope it makes sense. All right. Okay. If not, just um, comment down below, and I'll always do everything to respond to it. Okay. So. We know we have to return the highest number, right? Let's see, return the highest value, okay. And we define this to also return the highest value, all right. All right, so that we're done, basically. So the next one we need to do is get lowest, which is basically going to be like this. It's just going to be the opposite. So I'm going to make a copy of this, and I'll explain that very quickly. So first of all, we need, it's going to be a public static double, all right? This method should accept the one-dimensional array as its argument and return the lowest value in the array. One-dimensional array, it's returning the lowest value, so we're going to, first of all, uh, it, it's going to return a double, which is going to be the lowest value, but we need to call this get lowest. And then we are assuming this time around that the lowest number is going to be the first element in the array, okay? So we are going through the loop. If at any time the particular number we are on if we are going through a loop, go number after number, start from the first to the last. If at any time the particular number we are we are on, okay, in the array, is less than, right? We're looking for the lowest number. If it's less than what's already stored in lowest number, okay. Okay, so I um, let's see. All right, so I, so over here, I'm I'm sure you guys caught it. Um, I explained it right, but I just didn't update it in the code. So let me just do that very quickly. Uh, I'm sorry if you were confused. So over here, what we were doing was, okay, so just ignore this for a second. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll cut this. I'll cut this just so you're not confused. So what I did was I explained it correctly. I just didn't update it in the code. I'm sure it confused a lot of you. All right, so let me just quickly go over this. In order to get the highest number, we set highest number, this variable here, to the first element in the array. And we basically go through the array, okay? At any time, if the particular number we are on in the array is greater than, okay, is greater than what is stored in highest number. This is what I was trying to say. I'm sorry if I didn't update it in the code, okay? So if at any time, what's what the, the particular number we are on, okay, in the array is greater than what's stored in highest number, then this particular number here is the highest number. So in that case, let's replace what's already stored in highest number with that, with this particular number here. Okay, so that's what I wanted to do. So let me make a copy of this and do the same thing for get lowest. So it's going to, we're going to call this get lowest. I apologize if I didn't update it. Sometimes I just speed up and I've, you know, uh, I think I forgot to do it. I thought I had changed it. Um, I think I explained it right, but I just didn't, I just, just didn't update it. Okay, so we, we, call it, we call this get lowest. We assume that the lowest number is the first element in the array, right? At, we are going to go through the array at any time if the current number we are on, okay, this time around, if it's less than the lowest number, okay, we are looking for the lowest number. If there's any number less than the lowest number, then that number, okay, this number here becomes our lowest number. So we replace what's stored in lowest number with this particular number here, okay, which happens to this particular number here. Okay, index will tell us what number we are on in the numbers array. So we're using index to keep track of basically what number we are on in the numbers array as we are iterating this loop. And then once we are done finding the lowest number, by the time this loop is done, we'll find the lowest number. We return the lowest number. Same thing for this one. By the time this loop is done, we'll find the highest number and we'll return the highest number. All right, so we have basically our four methods um, done.